In this video, we're going to take a look at Native Instruments Una Corda for Contact. Now, this is a piano library, but it's it's capable of much more, especially with this effects section. It almost kind of reminds me a little bit about things you can do uh, with, say, the Giant. So it's more than just a piano. It's a really interesting instrument, and we'll get into and listen to a few samples. Now, this is not going to be a playthrough video. This video is going to basically just step through all of the options that we have here, just so you know how it works and how all of these options affect our final tone. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you'll notice here at Unicorda, we have three different NKIs. Right here is the Pure, right here is the Felt, right here is the Cotton. As you'll see, the interfaces are pretty much the same. The only thing you'll notice is the color coding differences there, and that holds true whenever we step through our options here. You can see this is blue for Cotton, we have red for our Felt, and of course, sort of the beigey color for the Pure. All right, so we're gonna hop over to the uh, PDF file here real quick. Now we're going to focus on the Pure because as, as you saw, the interface is, is pretty much the same and the controls are pretty much the same. The only thing different is the sounds a little, a little bit different with these different fabrics. So here's the Pure. If I just play a chord, let me just hit a note. So that's much different than a normal piano. Let's hop over here to the PDF real quick here. And as you can see here, as the name suggests, una corda features only one string per key. All right, whereas most uh, pianos would be, say, a three string piano. So it's a much different tone just right off the bat there. So once again, this is the pure. Really cool tone. Let me hit that mute there. Now we'll just hear the felt. And we'll go real quick to the cotton here. Really great sounds. But for this video, we're going to focus on the pure. We will have other videos that go through each of these in a, in a playthrough video without me talking. So you can kind of hear exactly what this piano is capable of. But we'll just focus on the pure here. This will show you. Uh, everything you need to know. And by the way, all three of these NKIs have a bunch of different snapshots. This one, of course, says pure. If you're doing the felt, it will say felt. If you're doing the cotton, it will say cotton, so on and so forth. So once again, hop over here. You can see our fabric preparations. I'm not going to go through this in detail because you can read this for yourself whenever you want. But as you can see, a special sound. So we have uh, features uh, like hiss and noise there. Really cool. Like I said, you can really... Uh, Use this for sound design. You know, it's got a close microphone position. It's got built-in effects modules. Really, really cool stuff that you can do. As we mentioned, three contact instruments. And here's the differences right there. So there's the pure, here's the felt, and here is the cotton. As you can see, it's suitable for a wide range of styles, okay? Including classical pieces by Bach. That's the pure. If you go to the felt, suitable for all kinds of different things, pop, ambient, jazz, alternative, uh, and of course, things like film scores. And of course, the cotton is a prepared piano sound. All right, so venture into a more ambient soundscape uh, based type of music. You already mentioned the color coding differences. The interface is pretty much the same as we mentioned, except it is color coded. Very nice interface, very minimalistic on its on its face there. But of course, you can dig in deeper and get into all of the uh, options there, which we are going to do here pretty soon. And you'll hear how all of these options and parameters affect the tone. Onto the workbench again, and we're going to get into this uh, in just a minute. So as you can see, what all of this stuff does, and I'll flash this information on screen uh, if need be to sort of explain what, what things do, but it's pretty self-explanatory. And if you don't know, you can always pop into the uh, PDF there. That's pretty much all we need to know. See, we even got a response page there, our main tone page there, all kinds of options, overtone, resonance, half pedaling, re-pedaling, a global area, our finishing area. This is really uh, where you get into uh, some, of, some of those crazy sounds. Okay. And this just goes through the equalizer and then the transient, so on and so forth. But pretty self explanatory. Okay. So that's pretty much all we need to see here. Let's go ahead and hear some more sounds here. Kind of hard to play with one hand, but all right. Let's go ahead and jump in here. Again, we're on the Unicorder Pure, we just have the Pure Basic. If I want to choose a snapshot, a preset, I can do that. So I'll just choose this one here. 
It's going to load up a few different things there. I hit a key. So much, much different. And of course, that just changes a lot of these parameters here. All right, let's go into another one. All right, this is going to be kind of weird, I think. Now, if I were to play a MIDI phrase, not working right there, but that's okay. But as you can see, you can get all kind of cool and crazy sounds with Unicorda. Let's go back to the basics because I want to go through all of our parameters here. So right now it's on pure and we hop into our workbench. Here's our response and here's our finished pages. We can always X out of this, but boom, we have a color knob, dynamic range knob and a space knob as well as the button right here. And at any time, if you want to know what these buttons do, these knobs do, just look right down here to the information area and you'll have a nice readout. Okay, so let me just hit play here and you'll hear the tone of this piano, just completely pure, no effects, nothing like that. As you can tell, it's beautifully sampled, a beautifully sampled instrument. Really, really cool. Let's hop over here real quick. And if I check our sample folder, just to see fully installed, at least on my system, let's see how big this is. We're showing about 10 gigs. It, it, you know, it can vary a little bit between systems, but about 10 gigs for the uh, samples there. Okay, and that's of course compressed. All right, so let's go ahead. Let me just go to the color knob. Of course, this changes the timber. So go to harder, softer. a dynamic range the difference between if I just continually hit this note at the same velocity it's gonna change a bit hear that I'm not changing the hardness that I'm pushing this note at it's just adjusting it's sort of compressing the difference between you know lightly pressed and hard pressed so we'll go ahead and hit play there really expanded up here. You can hear that. And if I pull it down, so the difference between the loud notes or the high velocity notes or more velocity notes uh, and the lower velocity notes are less different when it's when it's down there. And that's that, that pretty much holds true through all of the pianos. And we, I've done a few uh, piano reviews here. So that you should know that if you've watched any of the other videos. Again, we have a space here, which is basically a reverb control. Of course, you gotta turn it on. Just turn it on there. Okay, and of course we adjust our different spaces within our effects right here in the finishing section right there. So as you can see, we can turn it on at either place and adjust the parameters within here. All right, so let's move on. So we covered our basic interface here. So we'll go ahead and dig in here coming to the workbench first you can see we have main right here as you can see activates unicorda main tone including the release resonance and overtone samples turn that off or turn it on up to you and as you can see now it's having to load in those samples right up here you can see it loading that in pull it up you can sort of adjust how much of this tone you want just dial a little bit of that in and say you throw in some harmonics and some reverse or something like that So I can pull the main down and you can see. Now let me turn the reverse off. Turn the main off. So really cool how you can really shape your tone here. Let's get our main back in there. Pull it all the way back up and we'll mess around with the harmonics. Very cool. And as we saw a little bit of, there's our reverse. We can also sync this. And we have time down here if we don't sync it. We'll have it on. Very cool. Imagine what you can do with sound design. Now, it probably won't sound good with a typical MIDI phrase. Of course, you can adjust the amount of that you want in there.
really cool. Let's start that over again. Pull up the reverse of it. Turn off the harmonics. So really subtle, kind of adds a weird, just like a weirdness to that phrase. I wouldn't use it for that phrase personally, but you can see what you can do with it. Onto tonal depth, we can go to natural or really resonant, of course, really cool. But very resonant now. Start that over. Pull it down to natural. Very beautiful tone there. Awesome. Then we have a fabric that we can control the amount of here. Of course, turn it on or off with our little button here. You'll see a lot of these buttons uh, throughout this. So we have it on. You hear that noise? As you can see, again, down there at the bottom, you can see that the fabric noise volume adjusts the volume of the sound created when the hammers hit the fabric. Okay, and we can choose different fabrics here as well. Go to felt if you want. We'll start that over. Really cool. Let's turn it off. Let's go to the ambient. Let's turn it on. Adjust the level. You hear that hiss there? All right, and we have different uh, presets here. Let's just go to like a radio tuning. You can hear that even when I'm not playing anything. So that's actually that's actually pretty cool. Adjust the level. Go to a cassette recorder. All right, very cool. Let's turn it off for now. Go on to the pianist. This is basically the sounds that, uh, say, the piano player, the actual pianist, uh, would make. Again, as you can see, written right down here. Turn it on, and we can turn it way up. Did you hear that? Did you hear it sort of like a creaking, like almost like he's moving on the seat? I mean, that is pretty cool that you can just pull in the sounds of an actual pianist into your song. Now, will that work in a, in a normal song? Probably not, but in a more uh, artistic sort of thing, uh, you can do that. Uh, again, uh, sound design, absolutely amazing. This is quite an amazing instrument here, and that's why we're doing this uh, sort of quick. It's not, not really that quick, right? But... Uh, sort of quick uh, look at how these uh, different options affect our tone. So let's go into the mechanical. Of course, all of our mechanical noises of the piano's mechanical noises. Have a low cut. That's, a, of course, a low cut, not necessarily, not for the piano, but a low cut for our mechanical noises. You may not want like a really low rumble. So if we turn that way down, you should hear that more. You hear that? And we can cut it. We have a note on or note off. So we're not gonna hear a huge difference there. Uh, that just adjusts the ratio of the mechanical noises created when hitting or releasing a key, and you can slide it around there. Pretty cool. Let's turn that off onto the pedal. We already have the pedal on. Of course, you can adjust the uh, level there. So we can have a lot of rumble from that pedal if we want it. You, you heard it right there. You hear it right there? Our dampers and our strings. And of course, Keep in mind, uh, you want you would probably want to come around and adjust some of these other uh, things as well. I'm kind of just doing one one at a time, just so you can see exactly what each each thing does, uh, almost in solo. That's what the main off. Maybe we just want reverse on. I mean, just think of using this for sound design. It's uh, pretty exciting 
instrument to work with. But I think you get the idea of what pedal does. So we'll go and turn that off. Let me turn the main back on. Very cool. Okay, so I think we've covered pretty much everything on our workbench. What do you say we move on to the response? Okay, so now we have releases, overtones, attack, resonance. Of course, for the pedal, there are low keys, which I've you know explained in other videos. As you see, I pull it down, sort of those low notes. It's gonna be reduced a bit in volume. in relation to the higher notes. You can get a more even sound or maybe you want like a more bassy sound. So you can adjust it like that. All right, now we'll pull it way down. Hear the difference? Let's go back a few bars. Very cool. On to the release, which we didn't do. We can go and turn that on. And of course, this adjusts the volume of the release samples. Pull them way up. Now listen to this as it fades. Still going on. Still going on. Hard to hear, but it's still going on. Okay. It was actually still going on a bit, but. We don't want to get bored here, so then we have overtones, of course. Pull up the resonance on the pedal. Very cool. Let me pull the resonance down there. It's getting a bit much. So are the overtones and pull the releases back on. Not too loud. And we'll start that over. Very cool. Of course, you can dial that in however much you want. All right. Then we have repedaling and half pedal that you can turn on or off. We'll just leave them on. And then we have our global sections for our velocity curve, which of course, if you have a complete control, you can just choose that. So your keyboard, you know, responds the way uh, you want it to. And of course, even if you use something like the pencil tool or a MIDI loop or anything to, uh, you know, if you draw your, your MIDI in and you're not, you know, writing it in with a keyboard, that's still going to affect your MIDI, okay? So we'll just show this right here. So let's go and hit play. We'll go to a nice soft velocity. Nothing's changed, just the velocity curve. Very cool. Let me have the silent key. Uh, as you can see, read down below, that is just enables the silent key function, so very low velocities, uh, you know, result in no sound. Very cool. And then, of course, our tuning, which we're not going to get into, really is, you know, self explanatory. It's tuning, stretched or equal. Okay, so on to the finish page or the effects page. And you can, of course, click whatever section you're on to close it or just hit the X over here. Okay, equalizer, basic equalizer uh, with, with a few options here for the mid. So, of course, we have the low end, we have the high end, which is called air. And then we can choose body, punch, or presence for our mid section. Okay, so we'll just play with this just a little bit. Of course, you have to turn it on, which it is. Cut out the base, cut out the top, pull in the top. Let's mess around with the mids. You can see how each range, either body, punch, or presence, affects a different range of our frequency uh, you know, response, our frequency ranges. Very cool. And then we can choose the transients, turn it on. Go to the attack section. Or sustain. We have our compressor and tape. And right down here, we can choose our preset that we want. You can see the different ways uh, our compressor is set up. Here, how it's affecting our tone and dial in how much you want. 
with your little slider there. Compress it really good here. Ooh, that is really thick. Let's turn it off. Huge difference. Of course, you have a bunch that you can uh, choose from there. Really, really cool. Moving on, stereo image. This, again, self-explanatory. Turn it down to mono there, basically. Make it really wide. We can also, we can also swap the, uh, basically the left and the right there. Okay, really cool. And onto the style, we'll get to that in a minute. First, I wanna mention the noises to EQ. This is actually really a really cool feature that you may overlook. Basically, it will route the noises to the EQ, which right now, if we go into our noises here, they're not being routed through the EQ. So if you may be getting like a low rumble or, or too too much high-end sparkly something from, from, you know, from the fabric or, the, or ambience or whatever the case may be, you can actually route those noises through the EQ. So you're kind of EQing your whole tone instead of, you know, just our finishing section here, just, just our main tones there. So that's pretty cool. And we also have that right here, noises to style. So we can affect our noises with this style, which we're going to get to in just a second. In fact, we're going to get to it right now. So let me turn off the stereo image and go on to style. And the style and space options are some really, really great uh, areas to mess around with for, for sound design, which you're about to see. So let's go ahead and turn it on and we'll just play. And we have presets, you can click here or click here, get different presets for whatever you happen to be on. Right now we're on timber. So we'll go to 30s. Very cool already. Very cool. But, but but wait, there's more. All right, pop in here to moving. Now this is going to blow your mind. It probably won't sound good here. Let's uh, go to Black Hole Sun. Again, kind of hard to tell in a phrase, but if I just hit a key. Tremolo fast. Hear that? Again, doesn't really sound good with our phrase. Unless you're doing a commercial back in like the 1980s, that might sound pretty good. But let's go ahead and blow your mind a little more with continuous. This is pretty darn cool here. Yep, that's the sound from Una Corda, a piano library. Really cool. Again, just click right here and you can choose a bunch of different uh, snapshots here, different uh, styles. Again, think of using this for sound design. Very cool. Now, if I just hit play here, it doesn't sound great. And we got to stop that because we're getting... Uh, Getting crispy there. All right. But I think you get the idea here. That is freaking awesome. Okay. I want to do one more. I mean, that right there, I just hit one note, and that right there could be some sort of a you know, exclamation mark that you want to make in a, whenever you're scoring a film or something. That could be an, you know, an intro, a title screen, whatever. Just that one note. Or you can make a nice eerie sound bed. I'm 
Very cool. That was three notes. Really, really cool. All right, so I'll I'll play back again. It's not going to sound that great, and I'll just switch to some of these. Cool, start it over. And continuous. Again, doesn't sound, uh, turn it down, <laughs> getting crispy there. Doesn't sound good on that MIDI phrase uh, because it's of course a piano phrase. But for sound design, for effects, really cool stuff. Okay, and again, I already mentioned the uh, noises to style. So all kinds of options to really create a really amazing, uh, interesting new sounds that have never been heard before. On to the space section, our last section, and we'll wrap this video up. Space is basically uh, like your reverb area, okay? So pull it way up for the size. And the distance, basically a pre-delay. and our different types down here. So we have Vintage, Room, Mystique, Piano, Echo, Reverse. And our Reverse Time. And our different kinds. So I'll just play back here. And we'll switch to some of these. Pretty cool. Go to Mystique. Really nice. Kind of getting away from us there. Just go with some notes here. Gremlins. You can hear that. That's pretty cool. All right. I don't want to go through all of these. Echo. Very cool. Of course, we got piano. That's, that's actually really cool. Very cool. All right, on to room, just so you can see that we have, say, Taj Mahal. Of course, you probably want to adjust this a little bit there. Okay, so that is una corda, a very, very interesting instrument, more than just a piano, but it's also a piano. You know, sometimes you might have something that's just sort of a, an effect instrument, just something for scoring or, so, or something that's just for, you know, a piano. This is actually both. It's a beautifully uh, sampled piano, as, you know, as we saw all of the options that we have here for the main tone harmonics mechanical noises, all that kind of stuff that you'll find on pretty much every piano library. But we have so much more here 
with Una Corda. And by the way, I got this here with uh, Complete 11 Ultimate. It is included in that package. Of course, you can pick it up on its own as well. Really cool instrument. And to finish out, let's just go through a couple of these just so you can hear the differences uh, in what it does there through our different snapshots there. And of course, like I mentioned at, up top, we'll have a different video going through each of the different NKIs and some of our snapshots. Okay, with, with no talking, just uh, just hearing what it sounds like. That's pretty cool. It doesn't really work for what we have here, the phrase that we have here, but it does work nonetheless. This is called In Your Face. As you can see, it's loading up there, and all of these options have been changed for us. Very cool. Of course, we can choose, let's say, Lost in Resonance here. Of course, it's going to load up some more samples there. And we'll play this. And adjust some things. Again, a really, really weird sound there. Doesn't work for this, but I'm just trying to show you exactly what you can do, all kinds of stuff. Let's go to In a Cave. Our last little peek at this here. Very cool, very cool. Again, doesn't really work for the sample that we have here, but... Uh, Very cool, very cool for uh, sound creation there. We'll go to intimacy here. More of a normal piano sound. Increase the dynamic range, pull the color up, make it wider. All right, very cool. And I absolutely love this style section, especially moving and continuous. You can really get some really cool sounds out of this instrument. Of course, combined with all of the other options we have here. Turn on our fabric. Let's go to felt. So freaking awesome what you can do, the, do with this, especially for sound design and uh, scoring work, things like that. Okay, so that is Una Corda. Don't want to go on much longer here. Again, we will have three more videos on this showing a playthrough with some of these different uh, presets that we have here, different snapshots that we have here of each of our different NKI. So again, that is Una Corda, more than just a piano, but a beautifully sampled piano in its own right, plus all kinds of options to yeah, use for uh, more creative work all within this one instrument that's unicorda from native instruments you can always go check it out at nativeinstruments.com